Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Delphi Economic Forum. It's my pleasure to have with me uh, Mr. Prem Wacha, who is the chairman of the uh, Fairfax Final, uh, Final, uh, Finance, Financial Group and uh, often called the Warren Buffett of Canada, I guess, and also a very strategic and faithful investor in Greece. Uh, good to see you. Nice to see you, Alexey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all of you. I want to ask you, first of all, to something that I know it's close to your heart. I mean, we have all been shocked but by what's going on in India. Uh, I know this is a country very close to your heart. Are, there, are things improving there? What's your own assessment, your own view of these things? Well, um, well, uh, Alexi, yeah, um, uh, when I was 22 years old, 48 years ago, I uh, emigrated to Canada and I've been in Canada since. And um, it really uh, saddens me to see what's happening in um, India. The vaccine uh, came, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the infection, the second and third wave came pretty dramatically. And uh, it looked like they were under control. And then um, uh, this thing has come surprised. Um, the politicians, the bureaucrats, the doctors, all of them got surprised. Um, and, uh, and there are many deaths, uh, in, uh, in, not all over the country, but uh, in the capital and in some other cities. Uh, but they are working very hard to get vaccinations. Uh, we, are, uh, we built a hospital, a uh, makeshift hospital, real quick in uh, Bangalore uh, city. Um, which is like a 150 bed hospital uh, to uh, with oxygen and all of that to um, help the people and we're hoping that we can uh, scale that up um, but you know um, uh, over time um, uh, Alexi that will be uh, well under control and uh, the big picture for India is that you have a uh, uh, you have a prime minister Mr. Modi who's business friendly got elected in 2014 uh, with a, a majority in a country of uh, 1.3 billion. And then five years later, 2019, got elected again. And India is a democracy and it's getting, it's got very close to the United States, which is the, uh, as you know, the oldest democracy. India is the biggest democracy. Uh, but India never had business free, uh, uh, did never had economic freedom for its people. And now economic freedom has come through and uh, I see great opportunity in India in the next 10, 15 years uh, under Mr. Modi. Now, let me ask you, how is the pandemic going to change the global economy and how is it going to affect the markets? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's affected the markets last year and uh, never before, Alexei, we had 180 countries closed down, never before. Markets reacted. And I must say the United States with the Federal Reserve and the Treasury reacted in 13 days in spite of the, uh, you know, uh, partisanship and uh, 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 acrimony between the Democrats and Republicans. 13 days, they came out with the biggest program, four or five trillion dollars, trillion. And you'll remember 2009, they couldn't get eight, nine hundred uh, billion dollars. So uh, uh, outstanding performance by uh, the governments, the Federal Reserve. And, uh, and it reversed the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, economy in the United States. It's, uh, it's uh, flying right now. Pent up demand is very significant. Unemployment is dropping, employment's picking up. And, uh, and there's signs of inflation. So I think the United States, this pandemic, uh, governor of the um, uh, Bank of Canada, he said, this is a different recession. We closed the economy, unemployment went up. We'll open the economy unemployment will come down. Uh, there wasn't any uh, like real estate crisis or uh, anything like else other than uh, uh, the pandemic. Normalization's returning. Vaccines are coming in all over the world. It takes some time for uh, travel. You know, once we all are vaccinated, we'll feel comfortable uh, that these variants are there, but we'll, uh, we've got the vaccine, two shots, or one shot with Johnson Johnson, Johnson Johnson, you're not going to get hospitalized, you're not going to die. And uh, things are returning in spades in the United States, as you know. Normally, normalization in New York and Florida and California is um, are taking place. We in Canada, a little behind the eight pole, we're, uh, we're coming back in spades to uh, uh, Alexei. And I think Greece is doing very well. We'll get to Greece uh, in, in a bit, but I want to ask about inflation. Is that something that keeps you up at night as an investor? 
that is the biggest risk the American economy is facing today. It's, uh, I remember 1981-82, interest rates for 15% for 10-year uh, and 30-year treasuries. Nobody expected interest rates to come down. Nobody expected inflation to come down, and it did. Today is the opposite. Interest rates are rock bottom. Like even last year, the rates went down to a level that we did not see in the United States depression in the 30s, that low. And what's, what is the um, view in the marketplace? That interest rates are not going to go up, inflation is not going to pick up, and the Federal Reserve says maybe we'll increase the interest rates in 2023. I think that's, uh, that's the test we have to watch carefully. My own sense is inflation is going to pick up. And perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, more than most people think. I also want to ask about the market. I mean, I remember when we talked before this interview, you said that, that the most characteristic about the markets, especially in the U.S., is it's a two-tier market. Could you explain to us, you know, what if this is all about and how it could affect the uh, growth from now? Yeah. So the two-tier market is very simply, uh, Alexi, that uh, high tech. Uh, anything that's high tech, for example, uh, uh, Zoom technologies, was selling at uh, 130 billion. It's still selling at. It's come down, but it's still selling at 80 billion. It's got revenues of four billion dollars. Revenues of four, and uh, uh, values of 100 of 80 billion dollars. Uh, it's only in the stock market that you can get these uh, uh, unbelievable valuations. So the whole technology is uh, uh, very expensive. And um, everything else, which is sensitive to the economy, um, got um, uh, you know got uh, crushed last year, and it's come back significantly. Uh, but in our minds, um, uh, that that area of the uh, uh, markets, you know, uh, got a long ways to go, and and it's a pretty significant um, uh, part of the S and P 500 um, uh, because uh, the tech stocks uh, occupy you know maybe 35 percent of the index now. Um, and um, everything else hasn't gone up as much. And uh, as the economy picks up, the earnings will pick up, and these companies are still selling, even now, selling at uh, relatively in inexpensive uh, prices. Now, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about inequalities uh, on the rise after the pandemic. Uh, President Biden has a proposal for some tax increases. Also, there is a discussion about the global corporate tax and so on. What's your view about this? Are those necessary? Are they going to kill some of what uh, you often call the animal instincts of the market? I mean, what's your own view? On this? You know, um, in the previous government, I always thought it was interesting that uh, their uh, tax rates came down, as you know, to 22 percent uh, corporate tax rates. The animal spirits in the United States got alive. But here's the deal. The lowest 10 percent, the lowest 10 percent got the biggest of, uh, of income. So uh, the lowest decile of, uh, of income, not the top 1 percent, not the 10, top 10 percent, the bottom 10 percent. They got the biggest uh, increase in wages. So you had uh, the lowest unemployment among black people. You had the lowest unemployment Im among Hispanics, women, you name it. So the economy works the best way, my experience all over the world, I've seen this, when you've got business friendly policies, it works. You have um, uh, the lowest unemployment, you have a tremendous amount of opportunity for everyone. And, um, uh, and you still have to look after people who are you know, sick and um, who have uh, been born with problems and uh, born blind, for example. You know, we all have a responsibility to look after people like that. Um, but um, the animal spirits uh, is very uh, important. And of course, uh, I see that uh, coming in Greece, uh, uh, the Alexi in spades. Now, some people are concerned that uh, globalization might be reversed. Um, and you yourself know how important globalization is for business. Are you worried about that because of the tensions with China and so on, that you might see a reversal and more kind of economic nationalism, protectionism and so on? Uh, not, uh, you know, globalization is, uh, is here. And uh, so if you're not buying from China, you know, the people have gone to Vietnam and, uh, and Cambodia and you're selling from there. 
and it's usually the same Chinese people who have moved uh, their business uh, to the different countries. So uh, you can never underestimate business uh, entrepreneurs. And so I think globalization will remain. I think India is going to be a major manufacturer because uh, Mr. Modi's got a business friendly make in India policy. May come here, make in India, he said. So he's trying to get uh, uh, companies that are in China to come to uh, India. So I think globalization is here to stay. And I think it's a plus for the world. Now, you, you've been investing in Greece for a while. Um, was there a moment where you're about to lose uh, faith or I can also ask in a positive way, what is it that made you decide to actually stay here and be patient and wait it out? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I got to know, as I told you before, Alexi, I got to know the people in Greece and I got to know Fokion, who runs Eurobank, and Alex, who runs uh, Eurolife. And these are very smart people. Uh, we came in when Mr. Samaras was uh, uh, running the, uh, the government and uh, we were very impressed with him. And, um, uh, you know, when Mr. Cyprus came in, I went and asked him if he wanted us to stay. And he uh, said, no, no, you're the, exactly the business uh, 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 that we want to attract. And I, I, I must say uh, he did a very a tough job, uh, not something he wanted to do, but he did it, as I told you before. But now under uh, Mr. Mitsotakis, uh, you know, you've got a, a, a prime minister who's got the experience that our country would love to have. Uh, I say that in Europe, you have in Greece, the best government uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe by far. And why? Because you're, they're, they're business friendly. You're, uh, uh, you're uh, attracting business. Business provides jobs. You need the government for regulatory and for a fairness and for helping people who are not doing well. But who provides the jobs? I say this all over the world. I see it in the United States, see it in Canada. Business provides the job. So, and you can't say where it's going to come from, Alexi. You have to open it up, make it really simple to do business in Greece, which, it, which is what you're doing right now, uh, with the Prime Minister is doing. And uh, entrepreneurs will take, uh, you know, will figure it out, will do whatever it makes sense. So, uh, uh, so I see great opportunity right now. I can't, you and I talked about this, Alexi, three years ago in 18. Greece had no access to the bond market. A week ago, Greece did a 30-year bond issue at less than 2%, 10 times oversubscribed. They're trying to raise 2.5 billion uh, euro and they had 26 billion in or orders. They did a five-year bond issue at less than, um, um, you know, almost 0% coupon, 0% coupon, 0.17% interest. And, um, and the treasury bills are zero percent. So I mean, a dramatic change for Greece. Um, and the uh, political risk has disappeared. In my mind, Greece is back. I, and I thought it would get back when you and I were talking in 18. I said, you had to have business friendly policies. Mr. Uh, 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 Prime Minister Kyrgios has um, um, uh, won with a, a majority. And he's passed a whole ton of bills and all focused on business friendly, uh, ease of doing business, getting a World Bank ranking, which is good. And, um, and you know, you're surrounded with all sorts of wealthy countries and uh, you've got the best climate in the world and you've got the, the wonderful islands in, uh, in the Greek islands. So um, I see huge opportunity, much more than most people think, uh, because you can't, very difficult to predict. Remember, You've had a depression in Greece. The economy dropped 25%, unemployment 27%. So most people, you know, are looking at three, you know, even now into 2021 and 2022, Greece has the biggest rebound. But, uh, but I think it'll be uh, uh, much better than that. I've always thought because you've come down so much. And so, uh, what, kind of uh, rate uh, what kind of growth rate do you think we might achieve here in Greece? So let, let me, I don't know, but let me tell you what happened in Ireland. And I think I told you this before. Uh, in 2011, uh, Ireland's economy, and then a few years before that, came down 14%. The uh, EU, the Troika, the uh, Irish government said 2%, maybe 2.5% for the next three years. The actual numbers, actual numbers, 
5%, 8%, and 5%. Way above what they thought. And interest rates for 14%, they went down to like half a percent. Your interest rates have already come down. Interest rates in Greece in 2012 were, were 35%. Tough to think, 35%. Now they're like, for 30 year government bonds are less than 2%. You've got this um, uh, uh, recovery and resilience funds, which are 57 billion euro, which you are using very efficiently, digitization, making um, the, um, uh, the legal system, reforming it to make it more effective, and on and on and on. So um, so I think, um, uh, you know, can you have 5, 6, 7% economic growth when you've already come down 25%? You know, you'll be surprised. We can't forecast that. You can only see what's happened in, in Ireland when most people didn't expect it. Today, most people don't expect you to go more than 3.5% and stuff. Um, and remember, you got a Greek population all over the world, including Canada. We are very entrepreneurial. You have changed the environment and they'll be coming in uh, back to Greece. I saw it in India. All tons of people are coming back to India now because they see that as a land of opportunity. And, uh, and Greece will have the same um, um, experience, uh, Alexei. Well, Prem, I think we'll leave it on this uh, very optimistic note. And if we achieve this kind of uh, miracle growth, we'll call it the watch. Uh, a growth uh, phenomenon, if that's okay with you. <laughs> I will come and uh, I will I look forward to coming and seeing you, Alexi. I've, I've uh, okay. very uh, uh, loved having an interview with you. Great. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Alexi. All the best. Thank you.